Hi, you are welcome to the uh, Vessels of Virtues School of Ministry, the Foundation um, Ministry Foundation course. My name is Dr. Ayodele Afia. I will be taking you on this particular module. And uh, once again, welcome you to class. Uh, what I want to say first is that um, I will encourage you to be uh, ready for a revelation of um, the the gospel, the revelation that that is behind growing as a disciple, being effective in a place of um, of service, being um, consistent as a believer. You know, it it brings a lot of things together. That's why this course is packed together, and uh, I would just give you. Uh, a brief introduction. What is it about the Ministry Foundation course? What are you expected to do? What um, um, What is the course all about? The reality is after this course, the Foundation course, which you are embarking on today, you will be awarded with a certificate of Ministry Foundation from our institution. Students are coming from all walks of life. People are coming from a place. Some people are ministers. Some are just new believers in the church. Some are part of a mission, maybe overseas mission. Um, some are just ministers in the workplace. They are believers and they have businesses. They have, uh, you know, enterprises. And I want to believe that nothing is separate. Um, as, as a minister, I believe that the, your, the, the, your way of life should not be separate from your business. Your belief, your faith should not be separate. So it should be, you know, both should be working together. You are a believer in the workplace. Therefore, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ representing him in that place. Um, you know, when I'm in workplace, maybe you are a business person, maybe you are a pastor, an entrepreneur, maybe you are a believer who is not even a pastor, you are not a minister, you are not in ministry, but you are serving people. You are offering services to people. We need to carry the whole understanding of our faith into everything that we do. So it's going to be a kind of holistic approach that we are going to be using to be able to help anyone that enrolls for this class. Um, just like I said, I'm going to be taking the discipleship or Christian maturity as a model. It's something that um, um, is so huge. We're going to be looking at a few things. But first of all, I want to you know, share a bit of um, objectives with you. We have the objectives that we want to be able to meet why we are on this program, why you are enrolled on this program. The uh, entry into more, you studying this particular module, um, giving time to study and listening to lectures in this module will give you um, ability for more intimate and mature work with God. You get you you want to you want you want to do more. You want to uh, devote more time to study. You want to know more about God on a more advanced level. You want to be able to see beyond the letters of the Bible. You want to receive practical tools to live as a believer and a victorious minister, a minister in the workplace filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us more capacity. We're going to do more, you know, into, uh, we're going to look more into the person of Jesus. It will give you an empowered life to live a radical and holy life. You will be able to do that. You gain more access to tools, biblical, biblical tools that will equip you even in this journey of faith then you have more confidence, solid confidence in your identity as a child of God. Regardless of who you are, maybe you're a pastor or a minister, you are a child of God. So it's, it gives you 
clarity of identity where you stand in the heart of the Father. Then you have a greater release. These are the objectives. I'm just running through the objectives, what we want to achieve in this course. You have greater release into your ministry. You have more clarity of where you are called into. Some people are called, you know, we are looking at the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4. Some guys are called into the office of a pastor, some are evangelists, some are apostles. This will give you more clarity as a believer where you want to serve. Then you'll be able to cultivate a radical prayer life as well, spiritual growth and maturity, you will grow as a disciple to fulfill God's commission. And then one other thing that is so crucial is your leadership uh, potentials are discovered. You discover more of what you carry as a believer. I believe as Every, every, uh, as we are believers, we have the seed of leadership in us. So this particular model will open you up to this reality. You will have gain more access to the revelation of where you are leading. Some people, not everybody will live from the front. Some people live from the back. So, so it, it depends on um, what your calling is. Um, looking at the introduction. Looking at the introduction, uh, I want to be able to flip this particular slide. You see a lady drowning, already she's tired, she's drowning, and there's a particular one active wanting to help her. Some, be, some people might be asking, why is it relevant for us to be equipped for you to be mentored? For you to receive training for you to go into structured learning system just like you've enrolled for the school of ministry for you to take this one year course this is anita Alvarez sinking and our coach andrin threatens as you can see this picture above shows a usa anita as she sank slowly to the bottom of the pool at the World Championship in Budapest recently. Our coach Andrea scanned the pool deck and made a split second decision. She dived into the sea to save her. The image should remind us of the importance of coaching and discipleship, mentoring, discipleship and coaching. It, this is very, very important for us to go through. Someone asked me, um, the, the, the disciples of Jesus, they were not, they didn't attend any school. They were not sent into any seminary. But I, I, I bet you disagree because the reality is they were in the school of ministry of Jesus for three and a half years. That was why they were able to make such impact in their world. Someone mentored them. Someone coached them. When the disciples, when the disciples were with Jesus uh, all the time, some guys would come in. They call them multitude. They will come in and they will go back. Maybe they have a week break and they come back to Jesus after one week. But the disciples of Jesus, they were with him day and night. They were eating together. They had enough good time together. We need to be coached. We need to be discipled. We need this kind of thing. So you have taken a right decision. This is just having you to see the benefits of coming to the school of ministry and taking this particular model this coach had a desire at had a desire to help we have been commissioned as a school of ministry to help to equip some guys might be die, um, drowning some guys might be maybe need help we have god has helped us with um, leaders within our School of Ministry and Global Network Leadership, uh, Global Network, to be able to help people that enroll within the School of Ministry. Some people need help. Like we all need help. We need help. And part of what we are able to offer, we are offering at the School of Ministry is support and coaching. If you look at, 
if you look at Timothy, Timothy was mentored and coached by Paul, the apostle. Titus was mentored and coached by Paul, the apostle. Joshua was with Moses for a significant time of years, time before he took over from him and became a leader in Israel. And one key thing, as I want to go through the introduction, one key thing, one key thing that is so important that we should know is that everyone who serves within the household of faith, whether you serve in any department, leadership, um, welfare, um, finance, or pastoral, or any, you fall into any of the fivefold of ministry. You require a set of knowledge that they are prerequisites. These are going to be taught in this particular model. You require a set of knowledge. You require a set of techniques, strategies, biblical um, roadmap will be given to you in a way that it will kickstart something new, a journey. However, the acquisition of this set of knowledge will inspire a heart of understanding. When you, when you get to a place of knowledge, your heart is inspired. You will be inspired at some point. You want to do something if you have been dormant, if you have been passive in your ministry or in your church or in your work with God. You want to do something. The overall outcome of this process will be definitely stimulate, will stimulate growth. There will be growth. There will be growth. God does not, he, he is not um, interested in us just remaining who we are. I would like to say this at this point. God, you, we can come to God the way we are, but he can't use us the way we are. At some point, you will see the process, the stages at which God wants us to move into new dimensions. He wants us to move into for us to be effective, for him to use us. So you will learn a, a, a few steps. You learn a few uh, things within this particular model that will equip you that will be a channel of understanding to you for effective work with God as a believer and then effective service in your place of calling in your ministry. If you're a pastor in your church, if you're, if you're a fellowship leader in your um, fellowship, if you are a business person, it will make you more effective in being able to discharge your duties offer your services to people in a very Christ-like way. And that is that brings triumph, that does bring triumph in that particular kind of sphere. Um, I, I want to read, I want you to look at this anchor text because looking at this particular um, uh, this particular set this particular model there should be a biblical anchor that would help us to see what we need as believers what you need as believers and why are you doing this this is 1 corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 so then let us who minister this amplified version let us who minister be regarded as servants of christ and stewards, trustees, administrators of the mysteries of God that he chooses to reveal. In this case, moreover, it is required as, as essential, essential and demanded of stewards that one be found faithful and trustworthy. Just like I said earlier, I want to believe that every believer saved is a minister you have a particular gift that god has given to you you have a particular calling upon you it might be a ministry of help if you say okay i am not a pastor i am not an evangelist i am not a prophet i am not a teacher i am but you might be a helper you might be called into the ministry of help you might be called into the ministry of welfare 
You might be called as a business person to be able to shine the light of God in your workplace. You can be a civil servant, but in that particular place, God wants you to represent him well. That's why he says, we are being called a servant. We are trustees, we are administrators to reveal the glory of God. In this case, we are called and we must be found faithful. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying to the Corinthian church in chapter 4 of 1 Corinthians. That we must be found faithful. We must be trustworthy. God wants us to be trustworthy. He wants you to be trustworthy. He wants me to be trustworthy where he has positioned us. And how do we do that? So that when we when we engage in this kind of program, when we engage in the study, when we give ourselves to, to growth, we would acquire knowledge. And then this knowledge brings us into a place of understanding. It brings us into a place of understanding. And what is the aim? The aim, our aim, is to expose students to the spiritual force that produces movement and development. Do you, please look at, look at that very well. To expose students to the spiritual force, the dynamics that produce movement, development, and growth within the church and the biblical principles that will be taught will help them in every area of their lives. This particular model will help you. It will build you. It will build the capacity in you for movement, development, and growth like a baby. I was able to develop a model. I call it a baby growth, uh, the growth model. A baby naturally grows. If, if a baby is given birth to and the baby remains the same size <laughs> for six months, for one year, that's trouble. For two years, it's still like an infant. That's trouble. Maybe the baby is malnourished. The mom is not giving enough breast milk or it's not the baby is not eating or something. Yeah, that's it. But God wants us to step into a dimension that will help us. A dimension that will help us. That will develop capacity in us. And then make us grow. And then when we grow, the effect of that is that we see results. Fruitfulness comes in. And then we can develop in the character of the Holy Spirit. We call it fruit of the Holy Spirit. The growth that we have, the revelation that we have in Him will help us to grow in capacity and strength. The foundation class, um, we have, I have um, another biblical anchor which is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth that's that's for this foundation course that is a key biblical perspective which we have to look at we need to show that ourselves approved you need to see yourself approved a workman who is not ashamed you are able to stand you know the scripture you know by revelation of the holy spirit what you need to do who you are what you need to do, the result that is expected of a believer, a minister. Amen. So, so look at these are the, these are the these are the areas that the Lord, I believe, God wants us to, you know, touch, in order to grow together, to be able to see that desired growth as expected of God. Now, if we look, if you look at the, we look at the, um, the, the scope. I, we have, we, obviously, every study has a scope where we will touch uh, 
which area and all of that the study will cover a significant number of biblical references on how god dealt with the people he used in the old testament and some characters will be looked into in the new testament as well disciples the guys that he used in the old testament will look at some of them will review how he worked with them in the old testament you look, talk about moses talk about abraham and in the new testament we are looking at a few guys as well and they will bring it to context and see how these guys how god dealt with them how god worked with them in the bible and then bring it to our life today how does it relate to us now there will be questions we'll be, we'll be able to attend to questions and there will be you can post your questions send your questions across to us to your course tutors um i am here um, if you have any questions after going through a particular class please post your uh, content to um the the admin email of the school of ministry admin at vessels of virtues um dot com uh, or you email it to my personal email which you have i believe which you have and then um, the outline outline now i have i have uh, the, the, the breakdown of the outline what are we going to cover what areas are we going to touch in in this particular course uh, discipleship and christian maturity we're going to be looking into the person of christ the deity of christ that is key knowing who jesus christ is knowing the person of christ is a whole lot of um key is a very very significant key to our growth as a believer to our blessedness as a minister as a child of god we are going to look at that we are going to look at the essentiality of personal encounter with the divine what it means to have an encounter with jesus what it means to have an encounter with god what it does to the believer the purpose of man we are going to be looking at the purpose of man knowing who you are uh, which is related to the person of christ and then what you are made for that's purpose people live and then they set into anxiety and depression and mental health because when people do not have the understanding of the identity in Christ, there's, so, there's trouble. Understanding discipleship, we need to know what it means to be a disciple. The, the question is, did Jesus ask when he was going in Matthew 28, build churches, get many converts? No, he said, disciple nations in Matthew 28, towards the end of that chapter. He said disciple nations unto me he didn't say build big churches he didn't say gather just convert it's a disciple so we are going to be looking in in depth we are going to be looking you know digging deep into the concept of discipleship because that leads to maturity we're going to be looking at the first stage of making the making of a disciple we're going to be looking at the four stages you know in depth discipline and fruitfulness in discipleship then we have a disciple and a disciplined disciple so we want to be able to see who the disciplined disciple is these are the things that we are going to be you know looking at this particular course uh the spirit opening up for change sanctification procedure in discipleship passion plus perseverance we are going to look at the need for community do we need do we have do we need community do we need community in discipleship as a believer as a minister can you do things on your own do you need people do you need to um how do you manage crowd how do you manage what you do as a believer how do you manage your it, it, do you need community and what does the community what do they what does it do to us and then we we talk about the, the the progress the process of integration into the kingdom and then i'm looking at some expected outcome 
What are the expected outcomes? What does it do to you? This particular cause, this particular um, uh, module, what does it do to you as a believer, as a minister, as someone who is new in Christ, as someone who has been ministering for maybe two years or three years, or you felt, you feeling that there is a calling upon you? One number one thing is the relational growth of that believer. There's something that happens to you by the time you get, you finish this course, you are going to be in a place that you want to grow. Then you've grown and then you want more relationally. You having contact with Jesus. You want to keep that relationship intact. You want to go to the Father daily, maybe day and night. You remember Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. By the time you complete your program with us, this foundation course, especially this particular module, you want to be able to maintain a constant relational um, a, a, a pattern with God. You want it to be on a regular basis. Not that you pick your Bible once in a week and then you jump out of the house and then you leave it and come back again or maybe it's a sunday sunday thing for you there will be a change a shift in your relational growth as a believer the second one is a personal growth you will grow in person i have been in christ working with jesus has make me a better person that will be your testimony because coming in and listening to this following these classes and then taking the 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 um the course materials studying getting the books will bring you into a level of personal growth you have um you have something built inside of you that you you people see changes in you that's that, let me just put it that way there will be changes the light will come Matthew chapter 5 you remember you are the light of the world then your light shines it, it brings so when you have that contact with god the first one you have relational growth with jesus christ and then as a believer which that is divine then you have personal growth which is you discovered yourself and then you are growing as a person that affects your interpersonal growth other people will see that in you you'll be able to grow interpersonally interpersonally you can relate with people people will see the light of jesus in you there must be a difference by the time you finish this particular program and then you continue living as a believer the last one is structural growth this is it has to do with the church as a school or as a, as, as a as a ministry one thing that has reflected in all our vision and our passion we've been called to is to equip the church so individual and the question is who is the church what is the structure we are the church you and i we are the church so when we get connected to the divine we grow in christ we have our personal growth because of christ living in us the spirit living in us and then we are able to relate with others very well we have a growth in the church you can see the way it flows divine which is christ that makes you a better person shine the light of glory everyone around you from your family from your spouse from your children from your parents they see the change in you and then you can then be part of a church and the church is is experiencing this growth because if all of us experience the number the, the, the first three uh, growth obviously we have a church that is glorious that is the vision expectation that we are trusting god for even as you begin this particular program this foundation course my prayer for you is that the lord will increase you in understanding because knowledge brings wisdom the application of wisdom brings understanding and knowledge is light that means you are reflecting the light of Christ. 
the path of the righteous shineth brighter. So it shines brighter and brighter. So the, the growth begins. My prayer for you is that you will begin to experience this light in the name of Jesus. I have been able to, you know, cover the expected and and the expected, you know, um, introduction information that you need uh, for you to be uh, able to start. Next class, we are going to be looking at who Jesus is. We're going to start from who Jesus is. Obviously, you have access to the slides. You can look through the slides, uh, but we're going to come back to class again next time to be able to start from who Christ is. We want to know the person of Christ, divinity, the deity of Christ. Who is Jesus to you, to the church? Knowing Jesus as God, is he Lord? Is he just Jesus? Is he just uh, a boy that grew up in, 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 in Jerusalem and they became so popular and then everyone just likes him because he did some miracles? Now we're going to be looking at the person of Christ. And then who do you say he is? Who is Jesus to you? Or what do you want him to be? Because sometimes we want him to be just our mates, just somebody that you can just... Uh, <laughs> so so we're going to be looking at that in depth in the next class. Uh, thank you for joining this class. I am praying that the Lord will help us and help you to be consistent as we grow together. Uh, God bless you. See you in the next class.